Why don't we get started? Welcome everybody to our uh, Woodland County Genealogy Interest Group meeting. This is like our what went third third uh, hybrid Zoom. I guess yeah. so we started June. Sure. Yeah, that so we were June here, August at the uh, Rockingham uh, Library in Bell Falls, and now we're here in November. And then in January we were planning to be up in Rockingham again. And um, what did we say? The Jan January seventh, we thought or seventh, Saturday. first Saturday. Yeah, mm -hmm. first Saturday. So that you want to mark your calendars. And uh, of course, since we have Zoom, if it's inclement weather. Or well, you just don't feel like traveling to Rockingham, you can sign in. <laughs> so, uh, welcome to our uh, our uh, Zoom audience as well. Um, we can go around if you like and do a short intro. Uh, I'm Jerry Carboni, and I think I know most everybody since these are some regulars that we have here. And Wayne and I are uh, kind of hosting this uh, this uh, genealogy. Group meeting. I I do um, research in uh, New England, uh, Western states, Colorado, Wyoming, and Italy, since my heritage is from that peninsula. So uh, I'm Kim. Yeah, I'm in Brattleboro, and uh, I'm uh, interested in genealogy, actually. Jerry and Wayne got me going on my research a couple years ago at the height of the pandemic, at the beginning of it. So thank you both. You're welcome. I'm Wayne Blanchard. Uh, I, I've been interested in this for a long time, uh, but particularly since I've retired, I just do a lot more. Um, my main interest is uh, New England uh, genealogy, going back to the 1600s. So. Um, I guess that's my main focus. I have tried, though. Uh, uh, you know, I volunteer at the uh, Rockingham Library Thursday mornings, and uh, so I'm challenged by uh, people that walk in want to know, <laughs> try to find something about their thing. So I've had to learn a lot of other different ways of trying to find stuff. And a little bit about me. That's open to anybody, right? When yeah. You, you don't have to go to those or anything. No. Yeah. In fact, <laughs> Maggie, and I'm, I'm, my brick wall has to do with Kentucky of all places and in the Midwest. So, exciting. So, we'll yeah. cover some of that today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, that's what I'm, I've been stuck on. Is getting beyond the 1890 census. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, right. uh, Michael Bosworth, uh, Brattleboro resident, and uh, been, uh, researching in both uh, sides of my family uh, a bunch, and I've also had help from an earlier aunt, and um, so there's a bunch of information out there. Uh, Michael but, has a brick wall that we're going to look at. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jude Lefebvre, I'm from Brattleboro, and my brick wall is my third great grandfather, and uh, from New England, so hopefully you guys can help me out. Yeah, I've gone to a few of those classes years ago, and so I've been on and off with this process for a while, just starting to get out of Well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for your help. I'm Cheryl Copeland, and I live in Brattleboro, and I, I'm, I'm of the younger gen generations. All of my cousins are all gone, my aunts and uncles are all gone. So everything is too. online. So, mm -hmm. and Jerry's helped me with some of it. And I also sent him my, my grandfather. What happened was a lot of my relatives have the name William. And sometimes it's Frederick William, sometimes it's William Frederick, sometimes it's William Holder. Uh, so it's harder to find <laughs> that way. Yeah. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> you guys online, you could unmute yourselves. Chip, you're 
Hey, hey folks, I'm I'm Chip Howard. I'm coming to you from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Uh, grew up in Bellows Falls. My family's been there since the mid 1800s. My interest is in both sides of my family. My father's from families. Push yourself over. I can push. From County Kerry in Ireland, and my mother's family comes from just outside of Genoa and uh, outside of Palermo. And also have an interest in my son's wife's family, the Sprague's, who were very uh, prolific, prominent in southeastern Vermont, Brattleboro, uh, Whitingham, as well as St. Albans. Thank you. And then we have Rita and Richard. Yeah, this is Rita and Richard Burrell, uh, Applin Burrell. Uh, live in Southington, Connecticut. Uh, my wife's from uh, Brattleboro area. Her family grew up in their her families grew up in Putney, and uh, so we wrote one of the questions that you show on your screen. Uh, we've been trying to track down uh, a marriage. Great. Right, we'll see if we can help with that. Yes, so um, let me put that uh, document back up again. <clears throat> Wayne, um, how are we going to do this? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know because we, we were going to cover some of the uh -huh. Civil War. Uh, and uh, should I just start with the top here, or? Um, sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, so. I uh, yeah. I, I mean, I guess we, we just need to see what we can come up with. Yeah. Uh, we'll try to get to as many as we can. Obviously, um, we'll just be, you know, nick the surface here. But um, what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to. Okay, we'll start. This is a. Uh, Richard and uh, Burrell's uh, question about um, a second marriage. Do you, uh, Richard, do you want to um, do you want to just explain a little bit? Yeah, we we've been um, applying to Mayflower uh, and uh, for Rita and Rita's, both her families are Mayflower descendants on her father's side and her mother's side. And we, one of the, doc, part of the document is you have to spell out birth, death, and marriage. And unfortunately, we tracked marriage forever. Uh, we went to the Congational, uh, got the records of the Congational Church in Putney, and uh, we were able to find when uh, Mary Reynolds, Mary Hen Reynolds Henry, because she married a Henry in her first marriage, uh, when she had the name of Henry in 1816, and later on uh, when she had the name of Applin in 1821. So we were able to find that, but we were never able to find the marriage. And they lived in Putney most of their life, when she married a Henry, she moved up to the upper part of Vermont for a period of years and then back down into uh, Putney area. Um, and uh, we've been trying to track records in New Hampshire. If they got married in New Hampshire, we couldn't find anything there. And so that was one of the missing items that we didn't have uh, on the uh, uh, on the records that we were needed for Mayflower. Yeah. All right. Now, thank you. I didn't realize that it was a Putney and Vermont location that we were doing. Um, yes. East Putney, they lived in. They lived uh, right next to the river. Uh, they had a farm there. Uh, Thomas Applin was there since 17, uh, late 1700s. Okay. Well, I'm going to share a document that I use uh, that seems to be helpful for me to track uh, my research plan and logs uh, for particular people. And I, and I created one for, for, uh, for you. Um, sorry that you disappeared from our screen, but uh, you can see us. So at any rate, um, 
I kind of uh, include this as part of a plan and a log. And um, I, I, what I did with this, I, I filled out uh, the information that you had given me. And we might be able to fill a little bit more out today with just what you, what you said. Uh, but anyway, I hope this goal is right. What is the date and location of her second marriage? Yes. Okay. And so uh, the research plan, or what are the documents that provide the information, location, location, now that I know a little bit are necessary to take this brick wall forward. So um, I just set up this uh, these questions. What is the location of the first marriage? Have you found these in individuals in the census? Once you have a location, uh, check for the death record of the husband, first husband. Um, location will provide access to repositories and other important genealogical information. And then what's uh, nice, and I, I can send this to you, uh, Richard and Nita, and you can play with it yourself. So it just this just gives you a great list of the types of um, record groups that you could consult. You may not consult all of them, but many of these are, obviously this is the main one you're looking for, the marriage records. And so you're gonna have to find out where those early marriage records would be uh, documented. And from the time period you're looking in, um, there was no state requirement that marriage records be, you know, uh, recorded uh, at the state level, like for birth, uh, which came later. But in the, you know, Putney uh, town minutes or any of the local town records, there may be a marriage recorded in that early, early date. And then, of course, all of these other things might point back to a, these other, uh, these other uh, record groups might point back to a, uh, to a marriage probate, especially any court or land records and uh, tax records. And of course, you're going for lineage society anyway, so that's what you want. And then anything under the miscellaneous category. Um, so, so as you do your research, you can fill this out so you have these documents. You can embed links in this so that you can go back to this and click on it and go back to the source that you were looking for. Um, I just find it a handy tool to keep my research, and uh, I'd be happy to hear from what other people, uh, Wayne, especially, what are you think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish I was this organized. Um, <laughs> I, I tend to, uh, uh, I, I, I tend to start sometimes to see what other people have found if they're searching for the same family. Uh, so, for example, the uh, on Family Search, there's a giant tree, and if you find something there that also has sources connected to it, you know, it kind of gives you a hint about you know where you should start to look. And then from there, I do do something similar uh, in in that I I uh, will copy the source documents save them and I usually open up like a word processing file and start jotting down, you know, things that I have found. Um, I'm not so good about recording things that I didn't find, which I didn't know is one of the very uh, hints there, that, you know. But if you do that, it kind of helps you from uh, going over the same, <laughs> the same problem over and over again and finding no results. But, um, Anyway, I you know, so I tend to focus on things that I can find. So if I find a census record or I find a birth record, a marriage record, um, you know, pieces tend to start falling into place. Um, I mean, it gets more difficult the further back in time you go. I mean, one of the reasons I like New England research is that there are a lot of records. So <laughs> you know, other places weren't so great about it. But even in New England, you know, for example, the uh, I once made a trip uh, to a small town in Maine and, and was actually prepared to spend the day there or overnight if I had to. And I got there and found out they didn't start keeping records until you know, the late 1800s. And I was looking for you know, the founders of the town, which would be beginning, you know, like 1806 or something. So they had no records in between. Yeah. 
Uh, was there a fire or something? No, they just, just they didn't, they didn't start keeping records, which totally amazed me because Maine was part of Massachusetts, and Massachusetts kept records all over the place. So, anyway, this, you run into stuff like that. Right. So, this, this first thing here would be important. Yeah, personal and family. So, records, that might, yeah, it might be documented in a Bible or something. Is there something? Yeah. And to find that, and well, ironically, I just add one more little bit for that story. You know, I mean, it's a small town, so the town clerk knew somebody in town that might be able to help me. And I mean, and the woman was like in her 90s, so yeah, you know, called her up and she said, Fine, come on over. So I <laughs> spent an hour or so with her mm -hmm. and she got had all this information about the family, you know, part of my family that I would research. So, anyway, you going to it, little, little it had a happy ending that way. Yeah. I was so disappointed when you went over. Uh, so anyway, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's possible records just don't exist because they never, either they weren't kept or a lot of times you run records for, uh, you know, lost at a fire or a flood or something. Anybody else have some comments or ideas? Well, I was, uh, when you're talking about records, is it, is it true that they were, even though a lot of towns didn't, take care of birth and death records, they always collected marriage records. Is that, is that true? I mean, not in general. I, you can find more old, older records of marriage versus the birth and death. And you're, and you're speaking important. about New England. Yeah. 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 Oh, New England. Yeah. Yeah. You, you may be right. I, I never thought, thought of it from that angle, but when I'm looking at you know, old towns uh, reading town select board books. You know, you're reading along and they'll have them, you know, minutes of the meeting, then there'll be a section of uh, Bible records. Mm -hmm. And there, there are any uh, marriage records there, it's true. Because New Hampshire's good for that. They, they yeah. started requiring the town clerks to publish birth, marriage, and death records. In, uh, I want to say it was the late 1800s, 1878 or something like that, 1888. Somewhere in there, they started doing this. So all the, all the town reports would have vital records in them. But like I said, other states uh, are pretty, you know, kind of late to the game in terms of reporting the case. I mean, that's where you end up with uh, potentially church records, you know, like I said, marriages. Be there, and of course, cemetery or cemetery records would potentially give you a death date. And sometimes it, it, those records will also list an age of death, even if they don't list the birthday. Right. You know, then you have a, a rough idea when the person was born. Um, so, right, I mean, you know, the uh. The online uh, access is great, and uh, but it's a tip the iceberg. And, like, there's so many you know, documents and records up applied beneath that, and and in places you don't even think about sometimes. I run into the fact that my one county that had quite a few records was uh, divided six times. Right, you mentioned that the brown. So at one right. point it was here and there, so that means six off of the Right, and many times the record stayed with that original county, so if you're thinking that they might be in the one that's currently named it, you have know, to find the genealogy of the county. <laughs> that's the that history. Is right. Well, Richard and Rita, is that uh, somewhat helpful, or are we? Oh, it's always helpful. Uh, we've okay. we've done quite a bit of tracking on this. Uh, we've been to Putney. Oh God. At okay. least a dozen times, and we've been to Providence, Rhode Island, and other places, and all kinds of graveyards out in the middle of the fields. And right. So uh, this is just one of our stumbling blocks. This marriage. Yeah, I that. Did you check? I mean, when yeah. you were in Putney, did you check the uh, early Putney records? Uh, oh yes, we've been yeah. through land records. We've been through okay. mar uh, marriage, death records, and birth records. Every cemetery in town, just about. So, okay. a lot of places. Right. Was there an issue at that time? 
Oh yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah newspapers. Yeah. yeah. The, um, I, I I don't know how accurate it is, but like I think out from the example that I just gave, looking at the Family Search Family Tree. Uh, you can share your screen. Oh, would that help? I want to do that. Oh, we gotta go back to the. Uh, uh, go go Should be enabled. What's disabled screen share? Oh, no. Okay, let me see if I can. <laughs> I may not. Let's see. I should be able to. Oh, I don't think I don't see. I see the. Oh wait, here we go. Good try now. Yeah. Okay. One of the things I discovered by German, when the German people got here, their names were changed. The spelling was changed. Everything was different. To make it, uh, to make it more. Yeah. 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 Um, so anyway, I, I don't know. This is the family. Uh, whoever put this in thinks this is who she is. Mary McCarter. Um, and I don't know. Jacob is the husband. And uh, no, I'm sorry. G G G and nine million. So uh, anyway, there are some sources here you can look at. See if any of those help. Um, this is the Henry. Uh, what is this? This is man down below. I got the right one. Uh, Howard. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's chips. Oh, these are the new. These are the newer ones. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I'm looking at the wrong one. Yeah, you're looking at the wrong. Um, well, well, anyway, you can show this as an example. It's an example. You know, you know. Um, uh, hmm. This is a it's a crowdsourced tree, so anybody can go in and change anything, add anything, delete anything on that on the tree. Uh, so what I look for though is this section over here that says sources. So if you've got some sources in there and somebody's added, you know, connected a source, and a lot of times this also comes from the Family Search website. Um, the um, you know it, it's worth it to check through these things and just see if any of those things match up what you already have for information. Um, so it, you know, it looks reliable or not. Um, the other nice thing is that in this case, nobody has put anything in here about collaborating, but sometimes there are notes. Sometimes I've left notes saying, you know, I think, you know, what I think about <laughs> is it, it's in there. Um, uh, and you can upload your own information if you are. If you want to connect to this tree and put your information about your family in there, uh, there's a pretty good chance that some of your ancestors are already in there because there's like, I don't know, millions of people in this family tree. Uh, but you can add pictures, you can add documents, um, other information. You can add a story if you know something about the person. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, I'm just using that as an example of if, uh, if you're having trouble with it, you know, like like I said, I sometimes help you to find out what other people have done. And you can do the same thing on ancestry, you know, connect with family, you know, you can connect with you know family trees as long as they're public trees. You, know, you can do the same thing on my heritage. My heritage is thick with those things. They. <laughs> They will even send you emails about, you know, say, add these 40 ancestors to your tree. Because they've, they've gone through and looked at other people's family trees. I would not do that if I were you, but, um, you know, I would want to check it out and make sure what's in there is really, you know, worthwhile. But, um, 
So anyway, just a, as a so a question on that. So are all those three you mentioned uh, crowdsourced type things so anybody can go in and no. This this one is. This is true. And there's one called uh, looking at the tree. Yeah. Or uh, what's another one? G Genie, Geni, I don't know how people want to say that, but G E N I. Um there are crowdsourced trees. Um so all three of those pick up there, on Ancestry, yeah. oh, people are full of their own tree. Uh -huh. um, and what else? My heritage, you, you create your own tree, but uh, then uh, any of the public trees on, on that question they are, you know, they, the company itself will search through and give you hints saying, uh -huh. you know, hey, this person's on these trees. Uh -huh. um, we get them every day. Yeah. So it's not, you know, uh, like that one's quite not quite as helpful because I, I, you know, I, at least personally, I would never just click the link and say add all these people. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, you're just it just you know, if people do that, they're just copying all the information on somebody else's tree, and unless you ever right. check it out, right. you know, how, you know, you don't know how accurate it is. Um, if you, I think I found uh, the person at least it's the second mm -hmm. most one. You stop your share, I'll share mine. Thomas Appland. So, uh, Richard and Rita, this is the fellow we think is the uh, second husband. Yes, it is. So, have you explored this through the family family search uh, family tree yet? We've gone through family search. We've gone. Okay. We belong to ancestry. So, uh, yeah. Not feeling. You looked at family search. To me, it's not as helpful as it used to be, but maybe it must be. <laughs> All right. So, at any rate, um, yeah. So, you know, this one was last changed, you know, over uh, eleven years ago. Right. There's yes. one four, four years ago. So, anyways, might be interesting to check back now. Oh, it's, okay. Yeah, but you know, here they have alternate names, no such. But anyway, it's there. Yes. It's, yeah, we'll take a look at it. Yeah, it might be worth it just, you know, uh, maybe you can even add some of your stuff that you uh, come up with. There are some uh, Rhode Island genealogy journal. Yeah, yeah. You're looking uh, Rhode Island roots, maybe? Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's right. <laughs> but, you know, it's uh, uh, the, the, uh, American Ancestors .org, uh, mm -hmm. that's put out, that's the portal for the New England Genealogical Historic Society. Um, they have their own database and, and family tree and family tree uh, yeah. possibilities as well. That's a membership uh, space organization to get access to that database. You need to be a member, but some libraries subscribe to it, like Brooks subscribes to it. So you can come here with your laptop to their Wi-Fi will authenticate you. You can go in and and search is quite uh, it's quite extensive. They have a lot of uh, records. Uh, you have to make an appointment first. I'm sorry. You have to make an appointment. Uh, well, this is on online, but oh, I thought you had to go up there. Okay. No, no, and, but you could, and they do, and they do do consultations as well. <clears throat> so you could you could uh, arrange a consultation, and they probably use Zoom. You might have to pay for it uh, in addition to your membership, but uh, it might be worth it. Uh, these people are really, uh, you know, at the top of their game when it comes to uh, research in New England ancestors. They're also now the publisher of Mayflower Descendant. That's right. So, uh, yeah, Christopher Childs, I think, is the, is the genealogist, who, editor, or whatever. Yeah. Um, the Mayflower. Yeah. Have you tried? Have you contacted the Mayflower Society itself to see? Uh, you know, yeah, we can tell know. you if somebody else is you know, if they've already used a similar line of your family. She, she already is in Mayflower. Oh, you already in. On okay. two lines, and she's a life member, and uh, but we haven't contacted them in regards to that. Okay, <clears throat> I just wanted to say, you know. Like I was researching a family, so I contacted them. 
And, um, you know, basically they, they, they could tell me, that, you know, nobody had used the particular line that I was following. And it happened to be a family that lived in Rhode Island, moved to Vermont. <laughs> it, sounded, it just sounded so similar to what you're looking for. Right. Um, they moved. Uh, hmm. uh, but anyway, I mean, it, it turned out to be not that helpful to me, but, you know, they could tell me that uh, nobody had joined for that particular family line. Yeah. Uh, but some of their documents were helpful for me. Uh, you know, their uh, library the research I was doing that they already. I mean, they've already got five generations. Since you joined, you already know that. Um, so you have to, you know, yeah. library. That you, you need to struggle with the connection to get to those five generations. <laughs> We, we also have uh, Godfrey Library down here in Connecticut in Middletown. Oh, yeah. Yeah, great, great, great resource. Yes. And so we, we don't belong, unfortunately, but uh, we've been over there. And you can pay on a case-by-case -case basis. Day. Um, yeah, day by day. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for your... For the wall. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't solve it for you. <laughs> That's all right. It's always good to hear other people's ideas. Yeah. Do they know that they were really married? <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah, well, they she has okay. the Applin name and she's buried with the Applin name, so I and buried right in Mount Pleasant. So okay. I would say probably got married. <laughs> now we have it that they were Henry and then later Applin. So we've been working on so many genealogies for so many family members, it's just unbelievable. Now I found I think I'm in another somebody else. I just sent it in to make sure I can get in on my mother's my, my mother's mother's side. I didn't think I could get in there. I think I'm related to what, eleven? Yeah, 11. eleven pilgrims. <laughs> uh, the, the other thought I had was that uh, Jerry can talk more about this than I probably, but there's a thing called the genealogy proof standard, and if, if you can document enough things in roundabout ways that convince, you, to, you know, it's a way to convince them that even though you don't have the actual document that says, hey, you know, they're married, for example, right. uh, but you have enough other proof, like you know, death records and gravestones, and I, I don't know what all might be required for the Mayflower, but um, right. they're pretty strict. But uh, yeah, we do. yeah, we know that. Uh, <laughs> the first time, the first, the first time we applied, we sent eighty pages yeah. of attachments right. to prove the lineage, and that was quite a. And then on another, we had a. Almost as bad, but not as bad. Thank God. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, Wayne, do you want to do uh, something? Pick up um, You're going to do that. Well, I have um, Civil War. Um, I there were several questions, and I, uh, when I <laughs> saw the list, I thought there were a lot of people who were looking for Civil War ancestors. And they, so I put together a little thing about how to find information about the Civil War era. Uh, I can run through that quick here. Uh, Michael, right? yours was a civil war. Yeah, today's was a civil war. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Well, we're going to have to do that. Yeah. Okay. Is this the Cole? Yeah. Yeah. Was he born in New York? Well, mm -hmm. that's one question. Uh, uh, one source said yeah. in New York, and those wow. are in Massachusetts. So, I mean, yeah. same pair of so this that. information I found oh, shared the wrong screen. <laughs> Um, well, I found A. John Cole. <laughs> so that was the guy we found the uh, Civil War record. 
Okay, so uh, in, in terms of places to look, if you have a, an ancestor that was born uh, before the Civil War, they, they either appear in a draft record usually, or if they were drafted, there is a service record. And if they survived the war, there's a pension, uh, frequently a pension uh, application. And then, of course, there are cemeteries and memorials, lots of cemeteries, uh, lots of memorials to Civil War era. Um, I ran across this on the, the Family Search as a, a wiki that helps to, um, it's kind of a finding tool. Uh, it has a lot of good information. So this particular one has this little article here on this link about uh, doing Civil War research. So I just these are just the highlights, but uh, obviously you you need to first identify whether you know you, you need to know something about the person when they were born, particularly. So if they were born with, I mean, let's face it, the worst time to have a son is 18 years before a war. So I mean, you're looking at somewhere between 1831 and 1846. If they were born in that time, uh, they might well have been in, in the Civil War, and then. You really need to know where they were, uh, particularly in 1861. So if you find, if you can find them in the 1860 census, that's probably the best hint you're going to get. Uh, if they were there, especially if they were on the younger side, um, they probably were still there when the war started. And then you need to know whether they were a Union soldier or a Confederate soldier. Um, from there, you want to try to find what regiment company they were assigned to. Uh, the wiki, there's articles within this link that you know that might help with that. And then, uh, you know, searching various databases. There are a lot of several different ones that I just show quickly here. And then, uh, well, then you need to figure out really what it is you want to find and come up with a question. Trying to answer. Um, so, just quickly on memorials, I show this one just because that sculpture is a full size line. And I walked past that sculpture for four years and never realized that it was a Civil War memorial. So, uh, <laughs> you, might, you might just want to pay attention to some of the memorials. I mean, this one happens to be in Latin, which is another reason why I. Uh, didn't know what it was. Um, some of them are huge. This is a Pennsylvania memorial. Each one of those brown bands at the bottom there are lists of uh, soldiers by by unit that serve from Pennsylvania. This happens memorial has to be in Gettysburg, but it's just a huge memorial. Um, so you might you know. That could be a starting point. The National Park Service has got an excellent database of um, soldiers and sailors in the Civil War era. Uh, it will tell you, uh, you know, you could search and search by name, and it will tell you, uh, you know, where they serve. Uh, Example of this is their opening page. Um, so just quickly, I'm looking for I'm looking for a uh, fellow named Orlando Belden, and do a search. It came up that uh, he was in the uh, Union Army, Connecticut Infantry. It's a little bit about they give you a little bit about the of, uh, the unit. Um, and then the major battles that they you know, involved in. Uh, in this case, um, this turns out to be uh, a description of a battle in uh, North Carolina, where uh, Orlando was captured um, and sent to Andersonville. First, um, 
site shift here. So then you can also then go look up military records on Ancestry. Under the search, you can narrow it down. In the uh, search pull down menu, you can go to military, get the uh, military records. And then uh, just as any other search, again, you can search by name. And it came up with several hits here for Orlando Belvin. Um, you know, actually, several very useful records for it. So, uh, oops, pull back. Um, anyway, well, the, the, this is jump. I don't know what, what I did. I jump back to the, the, this that database here. It only gives you basic information what company they're in, what, what uh, regiment, and so forth. Um, on, but if you can find something like this, this is a death register. It shows that he died in 20th of February, 1865 at a hospital in Annapolis, Maryland. So the question I had that was, was asked was, you know, when did he die and where did he die? The uh, person I was trying to help did, didn't have that. So um, anyway, so that, that was a nice hit right there. There are a number, of each state, um, they publish the uh, names of men who served in the Civil War, sometimes multi-volume uh, books, but they're very helpful because this one gives you a lot of detail. You know, it shows that he was when he enlisted, or when he mustered out, or he mustered out you know, when he died. <laughs> when he, oh, this is when he mustered. When he enlisted, when he mustered in, and then on, on the remarks, it shows that he was captured, he was paroled, and, and then that he died in the hospital. Anyway, uh, we I do have a handout for that, but it lists um, the states, um, the, the names of the books for each state, and, and they're very they can be found online for the most part. Um, we have that handout on the. We have it on the. You have to put it on the, on the uh, Google share. Okay. Yeah. So if you're uh, if you're looking for that, uh, you know. I would, these, these books are really very helpful. Uh, and if you look for them online, you can actually search by name inside the book. Right. You know, like uh, Google Books or Family Search Books or Half of Trust or Archive.org. You know, there's several sites that have books. Uh, the, uh, one of the things that in family search, it's possible to go. Not all of their stuff is indexed, in other words, searchable by name. But if you go to the catalog in family search, you can search by a topic. So in this case, I searched on United States Civil War. I first searched on Civil War, and then of course I realized family search is a worldwide organization, so I got all kinds of civil wars. But once I put in the United States Civil War, um, it, it gives you page after page of links that have Civil War in the title. But when I scrolled down, I found uh, that in Connecticut, there was a thing called Military Records uh, Civil War for this for uh, Berlin, Connecticut. And when I opened it up, there it was really births, marriages, and deaths. So it took me, if you do this, it's like if you've done other research prior to computers, you had to go and find a microfilm usually and scroll through bolts and rolls of microfilm. So it's like doing that. Um, you, you, you get all the, you can see all the images, but they are not, they're only in the order that they were digitized or microfilmed in the first place. You lose a digitized version of a microfilm. But uh, it's possible to do. So when I did that, I came up with uh, this was a, a. It turns out this town in Connecticut, uh, at a town meeting, decided they would record the names of all of the men who served in the Civil War, and to a certain degree, what happened to them. So I found Orlando Belden in there, and, and again, it's. Uh, 
kind of verifies that he was, uh, well, he survived being in Andersonville prison, which is kind of a feat in itself, though, that one. A horrible place. And, but then ended up dying in the, uh, in the hospital. So it's another, you know, another record. Try to verify that what I'm looking at is what I wanted to find. Um, so I'm, I'm just kind of quickly running through some of the places you can look. National Archives does have um, a place where you can search their records. This is archives.gov. Just be careful with that because archives.com is a commercial site. Archives.org is excellent, but um, I think it's just archive.org. Uh, but it's not the government site. So this is the government national archives. And in there, there's a section on researching military records. And inside of there, you can search by war. And so you can then search, click on Civil War. Uh, whoops. Um, a lot of the information there, I, I saw a lot of difficulty with the National Archives website itself. That's, uh, I don't find it particularly user friendly. <laughs> they're trying to make it better. So, with their, uh, I mean, they have billions of records, and uh, they're not all online, obviously. But uh, and these are kind of finding aids, you know, if you're looking for information about. It'll tell you kind of where these records are stored. Civil War, by the way, is in Washington itself at the National Archives building in Washington uh, for Union Army uh, Union soldiers. We've done, a, we've done a session on this, um, I don't know if it's in August or not, and um, I think the PowerPoint is up on our, our Google Share folder. So yeah. I always send out a link when we do the video. Check that out. So um, cemeteries, uh, obviously another thing, and there, there's a cemetery locator for the Veterans Administration. Find a Grave is excellent, by the way. I mean, it's crowdsourced. People depends on people, you know, putting the information in on that site. But I found it really useful. And uh, but the, the Veterans Administration does have a, what's called the grave locator. And so I typed this thing in there um, and came up with uh, that he's buried in uh, Annapolis, uh, and it tells you what section. Section M, number 406. In this case, uh, he actually has two gravestones. One is in uh, Maple Cemetery in Berlin, Connecticut, and the other one is in Indianapolis National Cemetery, Maryland. Um, I assume one's a memorial and the other one's where he's actually buried. So he's probably buried there in Annapolis. Where he died at the hospital. All right. Um, now, fold three is a subscription. You have to pay an additional fee, but it, it is it focuses on military records. Um, so shifting gears a little bit, this is where we found the John Cole. Oh. <laughs> we found the one you're looking for, mm -hmm. um, Jerry. Came up with this one for me. Um, so this, these are muster roll cards. Basically, it, it accounts for where the person is at various times during his enlistment. This particular card was useful because it shows that he enlisted in the 37th Regiment from the Massachusetts Infantry, Infantry, but he was born in Oswego, New York. Um, 31 years old, a laborer. Enlisted in uh, 1863 in Springfield, Mass. So um, I was a little surprised to find that, frankly, because I, I the most Civil War era people probably enlisted where they were living. So if this is your the fellow you're looking for, somehow he moved uh, to uh, Massachusetts. <laughs> uh, I found that John Cole. Uh, 37th Infantry, 
who, and in that, this record from ancestry, says he was born in Massachusetts. Uh -huh. so that's from my confusion, but you know, it's the yeah. same person or not. Yeah. Um, no, there are, um, there were like 19 records in this file. Uh, so I only pulled out a couple of them here. But this, and this you know, so they show where the person was at the time. So in this case, he was admitted to a field hospital in Maryland and then transferred to a hospital in Philadelphia. Um, Do they have a death date on this, John? Um, this, this is his enlistment papers. Um, let's see, here's the summary. So, this, it, this just explains like where they got the information, where they got the information. Uh, but if you were to look, Massachusetts has a multi-volume set of nine serves in the, in the uh, mm -hmm. it, it should say in there. Uh, it might say when he died. Um, the um, three has it's it's a cooperative agreement with the, the National Archives, so they're digitizing all these records and. and uh, Putting a, uh, uh, if you go to a national archive site, you can use you can use both three for free. <laughs> otherwise, they're not. Otherwise, it's a fee to get into. Um, there are uh, uh, Jerry also found uh, an obituary that uh, uh, I thought that confirmed. See where he was. Uh, well, we didn't. It didn't. Uh, <laughs> we didn't copy the uh, date of the paper, <laughs> but we, we can get it uh, in terms of. But it sounded. Uh, it's uh, you know I. It, the obituary again confirms that at least this John Cole was in the 37th Massachusetts Regiment. Uh, and, and it gives the uh, captain that he served under. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it's, it's actually, I threw it up here just to, you know, it's another place to look if you can find an obituary like this. Uh, and there were other articles about uh, about him. Uh, he died shortly after his birthday party, which he too. Died in Pittsfield, uh, and it shows where the yeah, service was held. Michael, is that a possibility? It's a possibility. Um, among the uh, sons that mentioned earlier, there was no Charles mentioned. But I, I don't know a great deal about the Coles because they're my step grandmother's family. Uh, and uh, so what I know is actually, uh, this gets back to the earlier question, what's out on family search under the tree function, which is, uh, you know, crowdsourcement. So there are calls listed, uh, my grandmother's parents and grandparents, uh, and is a John Cole listed as a as a grandparent, but uh, through uh, son Charles. So I didn't see a Charles listed in the uh, sons earlier. So maybe <laughs> more more exploration. <laughs> uh, yeah. So DNA wouldn't necessarily work in this case. Because of the step. It, 
Yeah. 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 My DNA for sure. Yeah. yeah. And my grandmother's not with us anymore. Um. Anyway, well. Um, I was using this to kind of illustrate places. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no. we, we found what you're looking for. Yeah. Did we send you the entire record, the 20 page record? We can send that to you. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. so you, you have a copy of that. Yeah. I don't know. You've got these, uh, I don't know what the date was on these papers. Oh, the, the I think it's embedded in the file name. Yeah. So maybe, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you stop and share, I'll I'll just do this real quick. Kind of share my oh, uh -huh. no, 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 I'm sorry, you're not done yet. Go ahead. I, I just got a couple of ones. So, so it, it, this, I'm pretty sure, is the same. Cole, Cole uh, mm -hmm. shows that he's buried in the, uh, in the cemetery in uh, back in back in Berkshire uh, County, Massachusetts, in Western Mass. Mm -hmm. uh, The other place to look, which I've uh, forgotten about, uh, Kim sent this to me. <laughs> uh, the 1890 census, for the most part, is destroyed, but there, some of the surviving, the surviving pieces are this special uh, schedule of surviving soldiers, sailors, and Marines, and widows of uh, the Civil War. So it's, it's another place to look, and especially if you uh, um, and this is a different person, um, but uh, you know you you can pick up information about about them. Uh, uh, they're both in the top and the bottom part of this. In other words, the top part listed in this case is listing uh, the names of the people, and then it, uh, this one lists the units that they were in, and then down below there's some additional comments. That it's the same. You know, you refer to the so you look at number say uh, you look at number twenty six at the top. You want to find number twenty six at the bottom. Gives you some additional information about uh, about the person. You bet like the nineteen fifty census or nineteen forty census where they figured they put more information. Yeah, well, only this one has something about everybody. Yeah. Oh, it does. Yeah. But but the history was the eighteen ninety census. You are that for those people that are. Mentioned here, okay, or about these people that survive. Right. Are they going to be on the basic old 1890 census, or is there some way of saying, talking about it being special? Yeah, well, the 1890 census was destroyed. Yeah, I know. So, how do you find so, a special schedule? Uh, I don't know. Do you know where you found that? Was it on Ancestry? <laughs> I found it on Ancestry. Okay. It's like it's a good research. Because <laughs> I've been expecting big things. That's very important. Yeah, I was surprised to see it. Yeah. It was that was on the family search. I think Ancestry might have this 18 hours. Yeah, I'll see if I can pull it up quickly. I don't see it. Well, I don't sometimes you see well, you might have to search specifically for that. If you go into like Ancestry's catalog, catalog, right. and then at, you know, then okay. specifically look for the special schedule of 1890. Um, you might have to go that way to find it. Um, anyway, um, stop the sharing. So anyway, a quick uh, little roundup of you know. There are a lot of good sources for that time period, um, and especially if the person you're looking for, uh, you know, was actually in the Civil War, was actually in a military unit. Um, and then there are other, uh, I mean, just for example, in the, the first fellow that I was profiling there. Um, You, there's a lot of information about various Civil War battles, uh, uh, you know, what what happened. So if you find the name of the soldier, you find the name of the unit, you can kind of trace what happened to that person based on where that 
where his unit was was sent, you know, what battles they were in, what states they were sent to, or whatever. Um, I'm sorry, so Jerry, you were going to show uh, something in a second ago. Oh, I was just going to show yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I was, I was looking for that special one. Oh, I'm just trying to special one. Yeah. I was just going to share the, um, real quick, the, the uh, records uh, for the, uh, from uh, full three. This is the uh, record on uh, John Cole. And all of these are the documents, 12 of them listed here. And it's something like 20 pages. So, you know, you could look over those. I, I can send that to you, Michael. Great. Thank you. Yeah. That's all I was going to do. I'm just taking a minute here to see if I can uh, find that uh, 1890 special <laughs> census. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've got a lot of information about my age on Cole. <laughs> but they were quite a few of them. Yeah, right. Um, His name was not. He just seemed like a white person. Mm -hmm. Like a white <laughs> I'm looking in the, in the uh, ancestry uh, catalog, it come up under the keyword of special census. Uh, yeah, ancestry. Yeah, so not, it's not like searching Google. <laughs> you, right. you have to be pretty precise yeah. with, with matching the titles of their databases. Yeah, it'd be a good thing to, to, to have bookmarked, you know, once you find it. Yeah, what I could do is we can, I'll look for it in the uh, in the follow up email. We'll uh, put it. We'll put a link to it. Okay. And again, um, of course, they. I mean, they had to they had to survive and live until eighteen ninety. Right. Or they're not there. So um, one of the other uh, questions was from Maggie. Um, which I thought and I did um, at time, some time to come up with a, uh, yeah one of those uh, research plan logs and we can perhaps go over that a little bit so uh, you want to kind of summarize it Maggie I think I tried sure. to capture it as, as much as I could well here. for for Ambrose I got like the twelve records uh -huh. so uh, all all the census verified, I uh, got in touch with the county uh, historical society. They didn't have records of his marriage, I mean, his birth or marriage for his wife's birth. So I've, I've gone that route. I've done family search. Uh, I did family search Wiki for mm -hmm. Kentucky and all the states lived in. So everything that they suggested that I check, I check. I've uh, gone to, um, there's no uh, record after 1890 of him. There's two surviving adult children. I followed their gene their census for, you know, the, up to the 1930s. So he, they were never part of an extended family. Um, I got a couple of uh, Searches in for two deaths that were in near the last place they lived, near the place that the children lived. Uh, that was dead end, and I even got called cemeteries mm -hmm. uh, in those towns to get any kind of record I could. Um, the death certificates that I filed for didn't pan out. So, um, see, I, I, I checked all of the usual things. Um, um, yeah, I got married. I got his marriage record. It, you know, like I say, all of the sentences is going back to the 1840s, up into the 1880s. Um, he was not in the Civil War. I, at the time when I had uh, the newspaper um, and both three, yeah. I checked obituaries uh, in all the different counties. Um, the people in the bracket area checked all the cemetery records. 
there's no one buried there with those names. This is in my show. Um, no, this was I checked my Illinois where the last place they were. Yeah. Um, the second before that was Indiana, and then before that was Ohio, and before that was Kentucky. So, yeah. uh, but they were alive until 1880. Right. So, um, mm -hmm. well, I, um, I pretty, I really sounds um, like you did a pretty thorough research. I tried I, to go through. Yeah. Well, what I did here, um, so I, I just put some in, in I think it's some, I found some of these, find marriage record done by parents, which then might provide sibling, sibling names going that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know what more information on the eighty census, which I think you, you have, you know the birthplace, um, other data, and then uh, you know, and I think you just you said you went to the uh, Family Search Wiki under Illinois to understand what the vital record of Illinois is, especially for death records. Right. Um, and so, so I did some searches, and and these are some of the uh, death records. These are on Family Search, the death register, death returns, and death certificates. 1900, so they yeah. wouldn't have to live until that point. And this is my, this is in my team. Uh, All of the different Coles, sites. And Coles. So you've done those? Yeah. Now there was one collection, I'll jump down here a little bit. Um, this one for the church records, I don't know if you know what the division was. Oh, Presbyterian. Oh, okay. So this is Episcopal. And this one, you, you can see in the uh, highlighted link, it says, Availability Family History Library. This is one of those family search collections. If you access it from home, it says these. You have to go to the Family uh, History Center or an affiliate library. Brooks is an affiliate library, so if you come down here with your laptop or use the library's computers, you'll be able to access those locked records. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And they, they finally got it. They did. They were finally in the pool. So Brooks yeah. Hall has it now. <laughs> that's great. That's good. I mean, that's good. And, you know, I mean, that's one that sometimes you have to drive to Bennington <laughs> to, uh, to get these uh, locked records. So that's that's good. So, at any rate, um, so this is all, you know, uh, you know, territory you've traveled over. Have you have you contacted the public library much? No. Because they do have, they, the library was constructed in 1903. Mm -hmm. And they do have a genealogy uh, and local history area. Uh, so uh, that's, that's their um, info at mattoonlibrary.org. Mm -hmm. I didn't seem to see any uh, evidence of online collections, but you know they might have stuff. They say they have an extensive collection of manuscripts and other papers. Well, the the people Ambrose and his wife were alcohol tenant farmers. Oh so yeah. couldn't read, couldn't write generation. Okay. So they you know yeah. they're not in the I mean oh, right, it, right. they wouldn't necessarily be significant people in the tech community, but I'm definitely in the check that library. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. That's where I found yeah, so I just I just kind of transcribed the Ambrose, uh, 1880, farm, farm laborer, born in Kentucky, mother, father, born in Virginia, Mary, his wife, Kentucky, 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 so then she's herself and her parents. And then there was a uh, carpenter in the household. You know that, right? He's from Denmark. And he, and he was 50. Now, don't know if there's some relationship there or not, or he was just a higher, you know, he was living in the... Um, you know, the household. Yeah. Um, and then in the 1850 census, there was an Ambrose at 33, Mary 32, and four children. And I suggested follow the children to the census for those locations. Yeah, but also, you, that. You, you did that already? Mm -hmm. okay. Also on that page, there's a Thomas column, 68. Well, that's so, so I'm wondering if, this, if there was a relationship. I, when I got, got hold of Bracken County, it did say um, there was nothing on, on Thomas College at all, in, you know, listed in anything. It did say that he was born in Virginia, and I did do the Virginia Wiki. 
on their research wiki. And um, again, uh, I, I, it would be nice if they were, but when I researched Thomas, I couldn't get anything beyond the whole thing is, is that I look at the history of the air, you know, the foundation of Kentucky that Virginia uh, and was part of Virginia at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, and when the, when they created Kentucky, um, some of the areas that used to be Virginia were now part of Kentucky. Okay. So, you yeah, know, so um, that's a, a sort of, boundary. yeah, so a check, I checked both yeah. in Kentucky and Virginia. And you checked in the uh, state archives to see what their collections are? No. That would be good to do. Okay. There, there's, you know, the state archives, they don't, you know, sometimes they uh, allow their collections to be digitized by family search and, mm -hmm. and so true, but many times they, they hold it there and then you have to use their own, you know, their own system. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, they were right. farmers and farm hands, so yeah. Um, yeah. they couldn't read and write. Right. So yeah. I'm pretty much going to say uh, I'm going to give up. Because I spend too much time on that, yeah. and there are other things. Yeah, sometimes you give up, and that's when they come forward. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, everybody, everybody even writes this because so many children, you know, yeah. that, that they all get the same debt. Yeah, you might find that. But I will do that state archives thing. We will do the public library. Yeah, thing. I mean, it's a, you know, you never know. Right? I know. But, uh, yeah. I'll try and, everything. Uh, you know, maybe somebody has done a study of the ten farmers of uh, Illinois, and you know, I mean, it's not in a genealogical perspective, but in a, you know, a, a research project. Right. I mean, you know, I think it would be that be some fight for. Somebody, and it's know, something, it's something because those, those yeah. Indiana sites, the uh, Illinois sites, they were all sort of somewhat close to each other on the map. The tomb was a really far yeah. from more than one daughter. Yeah, but, yeah so, you I know, think, I checked everything. I think time. I read something in the Wikipedia on, on Coles, which is the, the county. Yeah, that they were going to put Eastern Illinois University there and then it switched to another. Another uh, town or county. It so we're going to put this. So I was thinking maybe the university uh, archive as well. Okay. You know, find one near that area, which uh, the Eastern, it's called Eastern Illinois University. Yeah. And they, they might, and they might even have an academic there kind of research on this, yeah. in this period. Right. Those are all, you know, kind of. Okay. Oh, and world, worldcat.org, which is this universal. You know, li library listing the books of you know all the like most of the libraries that belong to it. Uh, you can do a search there and see if there's any you know, uh, Illinois tenant farmer you know, monograph or something. Okay, there great. Some other some other ideas. I think. Uh, oh yeah, there was this wheel records three wheels wheel records of uh, Coles County and. I didn't and see that. You didn't. Huh? That, that's in, uh, okay, that's another one with locked records. All right, let me see. I'll just do this starting. Uh, uh, so that's Illinois Probate Court. I'm logged in. So if you try to do this from your home, you'd get a locked record. But this is now we can look at this. Um, so um, let's see. I just blanked out on their last name as well. Um, it was Collins. Oh, Am oh Collins. Right. Andrews Collins. Yeah. So I, I wasn't. I didn't. I wasn't able to look at this from home. So I don't know uh, what we're going to face here. <laughs> uh, so they're. Uh, over 1,400 images, <laughs> and uh, probably not indexed. So let's see if that is a neurotrinal index. And of course, you got to deal with the handwriting. 
inventory property belonging to the state of Henry Abbott. Well, it might be alphabetical. <laughs> so that might be something you want to explore. You know, um, that's one of the tricks. Yeah, of using this thing is to figure sure. out what order they're in. Yeah, you know, I uh, ran into the same thing that we're right. trying to refer to earlier when I was looking for military records. Um, it, right. I couldn't figure out why I was, you know, I was coming up with like birth, marriage records, and death records. Yeah. And then finally, I discovered that, you know, kind of in the middle of all those things was a whole section on the middle, of, you know, Civil War. It looks for Connecticut. Yeah, it Thomas looks like County. it's in, um, it yeah. looks like it's in some alphabetical order. We just came up with an hatred in the last thing. All right, so there's Graham. So sometimes you have to kind of adjust, you know, you have to, I actually attended a workshop a few years back about how they use waypoints in uh, uh, searching these browse, browse records. And the guy had sort of a way of doing it, but, you know, I don't know if there's any way you really can do it here unless they had like a, a, a sheet that said that C belong, you know, start here, B start here. But it doesn't look like, uh, I, don't know, I don't know what these little things are here. This looks like a record on another record. I don't know. Oh, it's just it's uh, okay. So that's a haze. So haze is nine oh four. Sometimes I just kind of go like three three lines up or four lines up and then see where I land. Uh, that one. Try to find the first page uh, where they might miss the name. Okay, this is, uh, I don't know. Hmm. Is that, is that, a, it looks like it might be in there. At any rate, you kind of get the idea of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it'd be worth it for you to, you know. Definitely. And uh, I could send you this link. Oh, you know, so you just go directly to it. Okay. Okay. Uh, do people need to take a break or do we pile on? Or? We can stretch. Yeah. Why don't, why don't we take a few minutes and uh, come back in case somebody has to use the bathroom or something? <laughs> Are you looking for that special census? Oh, when it was? Can you find it? Jeff, you're still with us. <laughs> yeah, but I can't find my file even though I have it on my... Let's try anyway. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm tracing this lineage through myself, my father, grandfather, uh, Edward J., my great-great-grandfather, Edward Daniel, to this couple here, Jacoby and Maria Titer, Tither. It's been variously called Titer, Tither, Teeter. Um, but what I was able to find is a marriage that was in family material that was passed down to my cousin. All right, this was the uh, parish record. Right. And this is so from Ireland? This is from Ireland. Um, and it shows Jacobus Howard marrying Maria Tyther, and I can't read much of this. It's dated February 15th, 1825 um, in Leeds. Um, 
And that's the only hard thing in that respect that I can find. Where I also find reference to her is in death records okay. of my great-great-grandfather, Edward Daniel, who states his father's name was James Jacoby and Mary Tyther. And this is all I got. Um, and I haven't been able to go farther than, than this. Uh, I've tracked census records. There's a Mary Maria Tyther, but she was born working as a servant in Bellows Falls. Um, but she was born 50 years after um, this marriage. So 25 years after this marriage. So that doesn't fit uh, at all. Um, so I'm stuck. Yeah. So did you, did you say you had a immigration? Uh, no. Listener? I don't. Um, I don't at all. Let me see if I can get back to the 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 tree. So I I have very few records. Just this Catholic parish record. Um, my great grandfather's death certificate. And that's the only thing that mentions these two people. So do you think her birthday was getting some feedback? Uh -oh. I didn't mute. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. I restarted everything. Oh, okay. um, where did you get those birth dates just from a, the calculation on the death record? Calculate yeah, as about, I put about 1804, and this is through family lore as well. Okay. When do you think they, um, when do you think they might have uh, immigrated? Well, we know that Edward Daniel, born in Tralee, he was in Bellows Falls in 1919. We know that his son, Edward Joseph, was born in 1883 in Bellows Falls. Um, so prior to that. Yeah, and there's another birth date, 1884 in Vermont. Um, this fellow is 1881, born in Bellows Falls. He went to Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Um, and so it was 1875 or after that I can establish family in Bells Falls. Uh -huh. They all work for the railroad and then ultimately the post office department. Uh -huh. So you're, you're sure that Mary did? Anyway? Yeah, my cousin who um, was in the town clerk's office um, and based on what her family has told her that... <clears throat> Edward Daniel actually moved her gravesite from Restlands to Oak Hill or Oak Hill to Restlands. Um, but I haven't been able to, I haven't been there to find the gravesite. So I, I haven't been able to establish that. Well, it'd be interesting. To, so have you searched for a, a, an immigration record of any type, a manifest? Or... Yeah, I would, so I've searched like Mary Howard and they're just literally hundreds of them. Um, and then when you narrow it to Vermont, then I end up often getting nothing. What about searching under a maiden name? I've tried that and don't find anything other than this one domestic oh. who's much younger. And, you know, it's, I don't know where the family came through. Did they come through Boston? Did they come through Philadelphia? Mm -hmm. Or did they come down through Canada? I don't have any clues. And I really don't know how to really approach that issue. Um, and mine stuff is very, you know, superficial. I, I don't know the path, so to speak. Right. Yeah. You're identifying some of the complexity for sure. And, um, you know, what existed before Ellis Island uh, as well, Castle Garden was a. Right. Yeah, Castle Garden was the uh, entry point. Entry point. 
New York, and then of course you have all those other places, including Canada. Um, you've been using Ancestry for the most part? Ancestry and Family Search. Yeah. There's a, another site by the name of Steve Morse. Uh, or uh, searching uh, for ship manifests. Is it Morris or Morse? Morse. Okay. Morse. I can. You got that? Yeah, I'll I'll show it on the screen. So I'll I'll get an idea. Uh -huh. oh, let me find it first. I use it mainly for uh, my Italian research, but um, it's called One Step Web Pages. And okay. um, so if you go down here, you have uh, Ellis Island and Castle Garden. And, you know, this is, these, these are also duplicated in, in other, other, um, other portals like Ancestry and so forth, but they just have a slightly different search interface. So I always, you know, I always, I always look in both. And here you have some other ports of immigration as well. Baltimore, Boston, Galveston, New Orleans, Philadelphia, Germans to America. I mean, you know, he's, he, he's a real, uh, a real, uh, computer nerd, so he set up these databases to search these collections. And he, and he has a great, these uh, district, census numerator, numerator district finders are really good as well. You want to find the enumeration district for the for the address that your ancestor did, and you can look at it that way as well. So anyway, we, did, we picked one of these. Um, so this is probably too late, but if we did uh, Ellis, Ellis Island. Now let me let me think here. This is Castle Garden too. We can go with this. I can show you what the interface looks like. Uh, I don't know what happened there. Oops. Back here. So, Chip, did you say somebody had already checked at the town clerk's office in Bellswell? Well, my cousin used to work there, and yeah. she said she couldn't find anything. Uh, okay. So, you know, you can you can start doing this because you're going to have all this. You do have to look under Howard, but let's just try the let's try the spelling of the. It's what again? T H. T Y T H E R. E Y T H E R. And then you can, you know, you can see what you can do with this, all sorts of different ways of limiting it. You can also uh, show ethnicities. And uh, we can throw in Irish here. Of course, I don't want necessarily limited too much. I don't know. I think I'll just try searching with that last name, see if it brings up anything. Okay, it said it had nine matches here. Of course, it, it picked up these other. Right. Experience, but um, so these are all later anyway, right? Yep. Yeah. So that wasn't so helpful, but um, that was only the um, that was only Castle Garden. So if we did a, if we could do another search 
and maybe come down here and do um, maybe a Boston. Okay, let's we try a Boston search. T Y T H E R. Yep. Okay, so that shoots you over to the back to the ancestry. And those are the ones you probably found, right? Yeah, and I think that Mary is the domestic. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I think that Mary is the domestic that I found in a census. Yeah, right. Birthday around 1876. Is it possible that she might be a, a cousin or a niece or we don't know yeah no, don't know um, might be worth kind of trying to search her you know origins in some way uh -huh. and you know figure out if you can go back you know or forward with with it so birth date 1876 you're right she arrived when she was 20. Looking at the rest of the manifest to see who she traveled with, you know. Like, you know, she lived in Tralee, and that's where all these folks came from. So uh, it's you know the right geographic area. Yeah. Well, I, I guess that would be one one way of uh, looking at it, and then because you're actually trying to find just just information on her, what. Yeah, I'm what trying happened? to find and establish is she really related? We everyone believes she is. Right. And then you know, how did she get here? Apparently Jacobus never came. Um of course she might have it's possible that she married and got and picked up a different name too in that right. Somehow. Correct. Does that make sense? So she married a Howard. Yeah. Um before that, she might have been married yeah. to somebody else. True, true. And she uh, lived just for um, Wayne's uh, uh, edification. She allegedly lived in the first house um, on the right before you got to the garages there in Gageville. So as you left past the cemetery around the bend in the curve, apparently there was some house on the right, and that's where she lived. Ah, right there. But I haven't been able to establish that either. Um, the digitized uh, tax rolls and all for uh, Rockingham don't go back that far. Well, she might have been in Westminster. That would be kind of right on the border there between two oh. mountains. Oh, is Gageville, would you consider that Westminster? I think so, yeah. Ah, okay. So off the top of my head, I don't know exactly where the border <laughs> crosses, but yeah, no, 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 that's a great, yeah. that's a great uh, idea, good suggestion. You know, so these have, you know, Bellows Falls itself is in the very southern end of Rocky County, and so it, like, yeah. for example, the high school, Bellows Falls High School is in Westminster, so. Right, yeah. Uh, and part of my street was in Westminster. I used to live oh, in Westminster yeah. Terrace. <laughs> so that's what I mean. I, you know, yeah. it's possible it's, it's possible that what you're referring to might be in the other town. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. I have not searched that. So that's a good point. Thanks. Yeah. Well, that's uh, yeah. Maybe we can, we can we might be able to do that somewhat online too, since I haven't searched right. those records. Okay. Well, I think we have a few minutes. Maybe we can get to. Uh, Yours a little bit. And, That'd be great. Okay. Let's um let me see. Let me pull it up here. No, I have it.
Okay. It's actually my second great grandfather. That's my mistake. Okay. So Not that it matters. Okay. Right. <laughs> it gets it closer to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So you can't go back before the marriage to Anne. Right. He's listed as being born in New York State, but Greenwich is right on the border of New York State. Okay. And the cemetery where he and his wife are buried is um, in Bedford, New York, and which is right on the border of Greenwich. So he uh, he spent his life, both his life in Greenwich, but it makes sense, you know, that he was so close. He probably was born somewhere near the border. Mm -hmm. Benjamin. Yeah, ten kids, which is <laughs> <laughs> James. Oh, James. Yes. Yeah. Did they all survive to uh, adulthood? I think. Well, one of them. So, does this name appear in the 1820 census as head household? No. The only thing I saw for 1820 was his marriage. And I don't think about the census until uh, 1840. And then there's a much more complete census in 1850 where he's listed as a shooter. I would think so. What about the finches? I haven't looked at this in a long time. Yeah. So I'm guessing that there's going to be much more complete records about the finches. There are a bunch of them there. In, in Westchester. Uh, um, in that area, yeah. Right. Because maybe if you try to approach it from the finch family side, maybe you can get back at the. Okay. You know, Thomas, you know, because because 1820 is just heads of households, you know, so it's not going to get more than that in the census record. But what about other, do you remember what other Thomases were listed on that census page? Were there like other names that you wanted to know? I just saw this in the paper. And yeah. <laughs> well, you're getting on this now, so you can. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't. Uh, Go back yeah. and spend the time. Because, you know, it was really sensitive to getting the composition of the household, how many children, and. Uh, the 1850 was pretty. 1850, pretty yeah. Complete. Yeah. And so he's, he's there in the 1850 census. Yes. As a shoemaker. And he would have been 53. I think the 1840, uh, I looked at that really briefly before I came. Uh -huh. I think it was more on. Uh, um, and how much land they have, mm -hmm. or the value mm -hmm. of the land, and not much else. Yeah. It didn't really so, much of so that would be a clue to look for some uh, land records and deeds. Family search. I'm surprised there was a, a reference to land there. Yeah. So the census is mostly had. They had band of ages. You can look up the form, but you know, usually it's the head of the household, and then it'll tell you like how many boys under or you know, this under ten or ten to fifteen. Yeah, there wasn't much. Uh, I'm just wondering. What you, I'm just curious what you found. Just, uh, I remember looking at it, and, and maybe it was around. Uh, um, uh, their livestock. I think they only had two horses. <laughs> it really was a very incomplete uh, picture of what these uh, 
lives look like in their education for you is uh, nowhere near as detailed as Chapter Oh well, yeah, it doesn't list. It doesn't list them who's in the family. No. Oh, yeah. no. But, uh, so there are um, in Greenwich, um, which is in Fairfield County, and that's where he was in 1850, right? Yes. So there are two collections on land records, land and property on Family Search. There's land records 1640 to 1901, and there's a general index as well, 1640 to 1875. And then there's another town record, 1700 to 1848. Okay, let me search. And it's, um, yeah, the 30, 30 microfilm reels are digitized. So it's quite expensive. Do you, do you use family search? Mm -hmm. Or you do? So let's see if I. Uh... So when you do when you do a, a catalog search rather than going to the you have it. No. Wow, that's that's like that. That like this every. I'm a newbie. Okay. <laughs> well, no, it's it's confusing, and I understand, you know, because it's like got a national archives, right? <laughs> it, it, there's so many ways to access it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, so if you do this, let me, um, let me go back here. We'll, we'll find this again for you. All right. So if you go to the search function when you log in and go down to catalog, you see you have all these choices <laughs> and records are like okay, I'm gonna go there, but not, that may not that might be just. The records that they've collected, they're they're in lots of larger collections, and many of them are the indexed ones. But if you want to find what everything they have, and then you go down here, and I would just click online, so I can and and you search by place. So you just There. And then you'll get this whole list of, and I've only selected online. So these are all online collections that you can search right from the home, unless it's a lot collection. You have to come here. And then I went to claim the property. And then that's how you do it. Just click on that. So you have these indexes, grantor, which is the uh, seller, and grantee, which is the purchaser of the land and property. And apparently that's, those are the indexes, and then it'll probably refer you to the, to these volumes here. You find somebody there. You know, you just click on the, click on the little image there to get it. Would you click on one to just sure. show me what it's? Yeah. So um, I'm having trouble with the. Oh, is it? So at any rate, if we did, uh, all right, it looks like we did two filmings here. I'm not sure what that means, but uh, if we want to do a grantor index, we could uh, click on here. And you're going to be faced with a. 1200 tiles and uh, get the first one. So, oh, good, they're typed at least. And this will say this um, this person here sold property, this person here, and it was a quick claim, box 24, page 551, and here are the dates. So, this index, and then you would go back to the um, to that other list and try to find this this record. So um, let's 
So if we wanted to do, um, you know, Thomas, we'd have to find, go back here. And then as, as we were doing in that other exercise, scroll down here a little bit where you think my T might be. And okay. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be way at the end probably. Let's just pick up. This is what I do, I just kind of guess at it. Yeah. That way you can jump very quickly to uh, a record. See what's uh ooh, talent advantage. Um that's interesting, I just kind of stumbled on that, but let's see what's there. I've got I've I, 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 I not encountered one where they just have the town listed like that. Is that what's in the uh, So what this is, I guess, is the town is the grantor. So they're selling grants to these these people. Which uh, is there a date? Yeah, way back way over here. So they're all different dates because they are. Uh, yeah. So this interesting. Here's an early record, 1670, of the town of Greenwich selling to the town of Stamford. So I think that's a line. You have, you have to look at the records to really know uh, what's going on. But actually what I wanted to do, is, so that's T-O, I want to find the T-H listing. And it looks like Town of Greenwich has a lot. So we hit that. Let's go down one line. See, we're getting close to Thomas. Oops, all right. So now we just now now we have to kind of page through it. See where the T. Here the first Thomas is. What was his first name? James. All right, let's go back one. There you go. Bingo. James to mm -hmm. Benjamin. That was his firstborn. 1856. All right. So, so what does that mean? He gave land to his first yeah, son. Yeah, it's a war it's a warrant, warranty. So it's a it's a land, it's a land document. So wow, there he is. Quite a gift that that's it. So then um, all right, this so this is 3277. And there's some other Thomases there too. Don't like you've got the relatives if you recognize any of those names, but um, yeah, but you got a whole page. Yeah, there's a whole page. <laughs> yeah, a lot of kids. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. It's the name is uh, children, right? So um, so we need to, so we go over here 
let's go up to the top here and find out what this uh, I think it's book 3020. Okay, it's uh, book 30, page 277. So then what you need to do is we need to get back to that original. Okay. Come down here. Here's book 30. And click on that. And then it's not the image, it's the it's the um, page. So this looks like more indexing here. And sometimes the pages don't correspond. So uh, you know it. <laughs> It does require some patience. It does. So it's just like what you're saying. <laughs> you know, these, these all these are still looking like indexes to me, so I'm not sure. And that and that. So you know you would have. All right. This, this, so this is another another section of what they microfilm because you know they're just microfilming this stuff and then they're digitizing it. So. And sometimes I got to stop and then go back and just try to figure out what we're looking at here. Because yeah. that one was. See, this looks like it's still an index to me, so I don't know what. I'm going to go back here to the what I clicked on. Yeah, because this is it. This is volume 30, and that's. Well, it, it said it actually said book thirty, so we wonder if it's actually. But that's the date, that's the correct date, right? Eighteen fifty. Yeah, it was eighteen fifty six. Yeah. So, at any rate, I mean, what it means is, I think you just need to go on this, go through this uh, collection here. So, what would be the goal? I, I, he existed, granted land to his son. Well, that's what it looks like. Just get to the document and read through the document. To see if there are any hints. Okay. Go further okay. Further. That's kind of kind of that's how you do it, and then look through some of these other collections here for this county. You know, I mean that, that was that was the um, and then the town records too would be interesting to look at. You know, that's only one microfilm reel, so it won't be as onerous, but still. See how many pages there, images there are there. This goes to 1848, so that's before the birth of his first, his first son, right? Or not? No, his first son was 1821, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I was so born was, shortly after they were married. Yeah. So at any rate, it. Um, there we go. So you got 327 pages here. You just have to take a look to see what you know, what what's in them. Then at that point, you know what what kind of it looks like. It has some kind of an index. Of what what it actually is capturing, we don't know. But that'd be another place for you to look. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. You're on your journey. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Wow. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming. I guess we'll uh, adjourn our meeting. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Oh, uh, oh, Richard and Rita and Jim still with us. Thanks, guys, for uh, signing in. Thanks for all your help. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll Thank reconvene you. in January again. Great. Take okay. care, everyone. All right. Yeah. 2023. Okay. Have a have a good uh, weekend. Thanks.